Today's homework video is about the colony of Pennsylvania and the Mid-Atlantic region. Get out your history notebook and turn to the next blank page. You will be copying all of the notes that are color-coded in purple on the slides into your notebook. Keep a sharp ear for what to draw next to your notes to prove to me that you are paying attention and listening as you follow along. Let's get started. Today's lesson, we will be answering the four guiding questions. One, how did climate, geographic features, and other available resources distinguish the three regions from each other? Two, how did people use the natural resources of their region to earn a living? Three, what are the benefits of specialization in trade? And four, how did political and social life evolve in each of the three regions? The middle colonies includes a group of four colonies. Go ahead and title today's notes Mid-Atlantic Region, and then number the four colonies we will be studying today, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, and Delaware. The colony of Pennsylvania was established in 1681 because the King of England owed a guy named Admiral Sir William Penn a lot of money. He did not have the actual cash to repay the admiral for using his navy during a war, so he offered him a huge plot of land that the king owned as payment for the debt he owed. Admiral Penn had actually died in the war ten years later, so his son, William Penn, accepted the piece of land we know today as Pennsylvania as acceptable payment. Pennsylvania is called such because the land was named Penn's Woods, after William Penn the admiral's son, who accepted the land and because of the forests that grew on this property. William Penn was a Quaker, a type of Christian, and he wanted to create a safe place for other Quakers to settle and worship God the way that they thought was right. Quakers dressed in plain clothes and covered their heads with hats as a symbol of being under God's authority. And that is why the Quaker Oats guy looks a lot like William Penn. Go ahead and draw a Quaker next to your notes on Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania was settled for the purpose of religious freedom for Quakers. Quakers are known for their honesty and their man manners and simple way of living. They are also known as pacifists, which means that they do not fight in wars. Going to war was against the Quaker religion, so they remained neutral. Pennsylvania was a unique colony. It was unique because it had religious tolerance laws making it legal, welcoming, and accepting of people of all religions to settle there. Remember the explorer Samuel D. Champlain? He explored the land of New York in the early 1600s, and it was first settled by the Dutch, people from the Netherlands in 1613, who built trading posts along the Hudson River. The Dutch named the colony New Netherland after their home country back in Europe. During the next 10 years, Dutch settlers would establish small colonies at Albany and other points along the Hudson River. In 1625, a guy named Peter Minuit, one of the leaders of the colony, founded New Amsterdam at the outflow of the Hudson River. According to legend, Minuit paid local Indians about $24 worth of trinkets for the land. Who knew that this land would eventually become America's largest city, New York City? In the 1630s and 1640s, Puritans from other colonies began moving into New Amsterdam. They quickly gained political and economic influence. The British soon claimed the entire region, citing the explorations of John Cabot. Remember him? English explorer who had been sent by Henry VII was the reason England lay claim to this land. In 1664, a British naval fleet sailed into the harbor of New Amsterdam and forced the Dutch people to surrender control to the British. New Netherland was then divided into the colonies of New York and New Amsterdam. The name New York comes from, was named after James, Duke of York, replaced New Amsterdam. New Jersey's early colonial history is similar to New York's. Like New York, the area was first colonized by Dutch settlers around 1613. The colony was called New Netherland and includes parts of modern day New York and New Jersey. By 1664, the British had claimed the entire region and had driven the Dutch out. 
New Netherland was renamed New Jersey, and New Amsterdam was renamed New York. Although King Charles originally gave the region to his brother, the Duke of York, eventually he changed his mind and decided to divide the region and give the land between the Hudson and Delaware River, New Jersey, to, to his two best friends, Sir George Cateret and Lord Berkeley of Stratton. Go ahead and draw a picture of the king giving the land to his two popular friends, Lord Berkeley and go ahead and George Cateret. Don't forget the big hairdos that were so popular in England at this time. Cateret and Berkeley began attracting people to the area by offering land and guaranteeing religious freedom. In return for the land, the settlers were supposed to pay a yearly tax called a quit rent, but the quit rents proved hard to collect, which prompted the sale of the land to the Quakers in 1673. Upon the sale, New Jersey was divided in West Jersey and East Jersey. However, by 1702, the two divisions were united as the Royal Colony of New Jersey. Delaware. The Dutch first settled Delaware in 1631, although all the original settlers were killed in a disagreement with local Indians. Seven years later, the Swedes set up a colony and trading post at Fort Christina on the northern part of Delaware, but the Dutch got it back in 1651. Then in 1664, the British removed the Dutch from the whole East Coast. After William Penn was granted the land that became Pennsylvania in 1682, he persuaded the Duke of York to rent him the western shore of Delaware Bay so that his colony could have an outlet to the sea. The Duke agreed, but this decision by the Duke angered a guy named Lord Baltimore, the first proprietary governor of Maryland, who believed that he had rights to Delaware too. A lengthy and occasionally violent 100-year conflict between Penn's heirs and Baltimore's heirs was finally settled when Delaware's border was defined in 1751 when the Maryland-Pennsylvania and Maryland-Delaware borders were defined as part of the Mason-Dixon line in 1768. Even though these four colonies have different stories of how they were settled, their geography and climate are similar. Along the coast, lowlands exist. In the west, these colonies host the Appalachian Mountain Range. Deep, wide rivers created excellent transportation routes for settlers to travel on and to find settlements, as well as to send their goods for trade up and down. Colonists living in the eastern towns and cities benefited from deep harbors and bays that were ideal for docking and anchoring large ships for trading. The rolling hills provided farmland for the settlers in the middle of the colonies and in the west. The Appalachian mountain chain runs through the western portions of all of these colonies. The climate in the mid-Atlantic region is overall mild, with mild winters and moderate summers. The mid-Atlantic colonies featured many resources not only for the people living in this region, but also to trade and send north to the New England colonies and south to the southern colonies. In this way, the other colonies were interdependent with one another because they traded goods grown or made in their region with other regions so that everyone could benefit. Natural resources and human resources in the middle colonies were similar because these colonies shared the same geography and climate. Natural resources included the rich farmland in many of these colonies where farmers could plant crops and provide both for their own families but also for the community and through trading to other colonies as well as across the ocean to Europe who would purchase shipments of these crops grown in the middle colonies. Draw trading taking place near your notes. A great number of German immigrants came and settled in the farmlands of Pennsylvania after the Quakers established that their colony would be welcome to all. And it was considered the Deutschland, named after their German homeland. And we sing about this in our colonization song. Farmers not only grew crops in the fields, but also raised livestock, including cattle and sheep, goats, horses, chickens, and other animals. 
The Middle Colonies is also considered the breadbasket of the 13 colonies during this time because of the grain that was grown here to make into bread. Feeding the people of the regions and shipping the grain produced up north to New England to feed the people there. Merchants in towns and cities were also a common job in the middle colonies. Farmers lived far away from town, so when they would come into town every few months, they loaded up on all kinds of needs that they needed from these mercantile shops that the merchants ran. Since many of the people living in the middle colonies lived out on farms far away from one another, coming into town was a big deal. The market towns and village squares were the primary places where people visited with one another. Social functions were large gatherings with people who would come from miles away to participate. Keep in mind that many groups of people had immigrated from Europe to settle these colonies, so not all the people spoke the same language. What groups do you see based on this map? List at least three different people groups along with your notes. Some spoke German, others spoke English, and still others spoke Dutch. Because of this, groups of people settled together in local towns that all spoke the same language. Because many of these colonies welcomed all religions, diverse religions resided in these colonies. Groups of people who shared the same religion would choose to build their farms near those who had this in common with them too.